one of the, the positives of a marriage catechumenate model is to reinforce that community responsibility to teach and to live out a good marriage. That's really hard in the world today. It's the second to last episode in the bonus interview series from the Marriage Catechumenate Summit that happened in Houston, Texas. And we've got a good one for you. Honestly, I'm pretty sure all of the Marriage Summit participants have been waiting for this one. It's Father Paul Hartman. Father Paul is the Associate General Secretary for the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Did I get that right? I think so. And he's a priest in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. In this conversation, we talk about the summit, we talk about what he thinks about all of it, his role, and he gave the closing keynote for the summit, and he was a fantastic motivator and storyteller. We had so many of our interviewees quoting his just do it phrase in his talk that we honestly had to edit it out of some, <laughs> but everybody loved how he just said, just reach out to people, don't ask for permission, just do it. So with that in mind, I hope you enjoy this conversation with Father Paul, his candor, and honestly, his humility. And are you ready for the mini doc? It's coming at the end of this series. We cannot wait. So let's talk to Father Paul. My name is Father Paul Hartman. I am the Associate General Secretary of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. I am a priest of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. And I came here to the summit on the basis that one of my responsibilities at the Bishops' Conference is to oversee our office that deals with marriage and family issues. So it's been a, a responsibility to kind of see what's happening, to learn about this, maybe to bring a little perspective of a parish priest to some of the discussions, uh, but to really be supportive of the whole process and the ideals. You know, we may not be able to reach the ideals, but we have to set them before us. Yeah, and you have your feet kind of in a few different worlds that you can connect some things to. So when you connect those dots and you listen to some of the things being talked about, are there any things that jump out at you as you're having conversations? Well, sure. In addition to the present roles and I having been a pastor, I'm also long time a canon lawyer. So I dealt mostly with marriages at the opposite end of the scale when they were ending. But I think so much in my ministry has been a process of learning from that, learning what, you know, what we as a community could have done better to support a, a couple when they were discovering you know, the, the differences and the complementarity that's supposed to be in marriage. And so now I think one of the, the positives of a marriage catechumenate model is to reinforce that community responsibility to teach and to live out a good marriage. That's really hard in the world today. Do you experience any differences like in Milwaukee versus when you're doing stuff with like the U.S. bishops, like, you know, nationwide? Well, a little bit, but I think the problems are pretty universal. That's what I've heard there over are, and there over. Are some, there are some cultural things to utilize or take advantage of, but ultimately it comes down to are they able to give and support a notion of marriage as something God-given, as something spiritual, as something necessary. Not for everyone. I'm not married and not everybody has to be married to be fulfilled before God, but necessary in God's plan. And so uh, every place Every place has positives. Every place has challenges. Yeah, I like the way that you say that. It's necessary, but it's not the only way. Because even when you're at a summit like this, even in talking to people, they kind of shift into that, that language of this should be the first vocation, or maybe even this is the most important. But it's like, no, it's like this and all these other things. Correct. How do you, in your work, try to help people understand that? Like, it's all of these things working together that is the beauty of the church coming together. I think making sure that each aspect, everybody understands that there are different aspects to be served, different roles to be played. Uh, I, I've shared at the table a couple of times, whether it's uh, the, the, the church catech the marriage catechumenate document, or for me, the code of canon law, when I teach it, 
I tell everybody, remember, a church document is primarily written for a small mountain village in the north of Italy, <laughs> which has a very defined community, a very defined territory. The pastor's been there 50 years, you know, knows everybody, knows everything. That's the ideal. The reality is that, you know, the American version of the small mountain village is Mayberry uh, <laughs> type of thing. But everybody knew, you know, Andy Taylor had his role and even Barney Fife had his role and Man B had her role. One of the things we're losing in the world today or that we risk losing in the world today is people willing to understand their, the, the responsibility of their role as, as mother, father, as brother, sister, as grandparent, as neighbor. I mean, when we talk about that engagement of, of a young couple, you know, the new, you know, how many people take the opportunity when they see in the bulletin, oh, we welcome these new couples, and they're just typed names there. You know, we can find out anything on the internet. So, find, if, you know, connect with them on, you know, on social media and say, hey, we're in the same parish. We'd love to, you know, invite you to, a, you know, a few people on the block to meet them. Everybody has a role to play. We, we, we're very American. We want to compartmentalize it and make it a, a checklist or an FAQ and just get it done. But no, there's more to it than that. So much of the language around that can filter to programmatic, like, oh, this program and then it's done. But what you're talking about is definitely, and what's happening here supersedes the idea of, oh, a program will fix this, right? Correct. Now, at the conference, I mean, we are looking at how do we provide resources to 194 dioceses, the military archdiocese, and, a, and the personal prelature for, uh, for the Anglican rite? Mm -hmm. So 196 jurisdictions. So we put forth programs. I realize that. But when they get implemented, when, they, when it's the moment of engagement, it's not about program. It's about the people. So how do you bridge that gap for yourself personally, even that you put you have to put out something so that people can cling to it, but then say, this is the start. You go and forge a relationship. You go and talk to that person, find them on social media. Well, I think it's that realization that our lives as, as Christians, as Catholics, is so often a both and. It is both the, the sacramental moment and the sacramental ritual, and it's what brought us to that moment and what flows from that moment. It is both the, the structural plan and it's the, the idea of diverting from the plan. I, I, I love to take, you know, the old driving classic road trips and I've got the GPS, I've got the map, I've got everything set, but I love taking the side trips. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And when you're, because a lot of what you do is forming the people who will form mm -hmm. the, the people. So how do you take them from saying what you said earlier, this is the ideal. Now for your reality, here's, you need to adapt it. How do you take the leaders to that place of being a little bit more organic in the way they adapt some of this? Well, I think the key there is that, I think you used a good word, that it's organic. We, we, we can't let creativity substitute for, you know, application in the sense that being creative just for creative creativity purpose. Um, there's still got to be the goal that this is an encounter with Christ. This is making Christ the center of the marriage. This is making Christ the center, uh, you know, of the sacraments and then the Eucharist, the source and summit and living that out. So not that intention and sentimentality are the be all and end all, but if we've got to adjust a little bit to get someone more fully invested in their parish, in their sacramental life, in their Christ encounters, you know, God be with you, you know, work with your pastor, work with your bishop to do so, but always think, what can I do over and above? If, if we give a plan that's too detailed, then it, it, it's self-defeating. But if we give a plan that's a great starting point, mm -hmm. then, it, then it allows the best talents of our people to, to show itself. That's awesome. And now, you know, after you're, you're kind of like looking at all of this and taking it mm -hmm. in, what are some of the hopes that you see coming from this, some of the opportunities that you see coming from a summit like this? I think the opportunities are any, any moment that can, you know, instigate uh, zeal and enthusiasm. And that's one of, what one of these things does. Uh, and it does so because, uh, you know, it, it's a multiplier. You know, everyone in that room is, you know, 110% involved, but 
you know, when you when you start adding the encounter and the networking and the the shared enthusiasm, you know, it, it, if you're 110 percent, you end up with you know more per person. It becomes something that grows naturally. Yeah. Well, great. Well, Father Paul, thank you so much for chatting with great me, and this has been awesome. Okay, you're welcome. Anytime. Anytime.